Hi friends, my name is Borro Dante and welcome to Overpain. Okay, let's do this. Our first patient is Alessandro Castelloni and his forsaken robot. So this is the sketch and I will make like a color version of this while changing stuff that I want to change. And I want to start with changing the cropping. Let's actually zoom out a little bit. Because right now it feels like this robot is hitting me on the forehead. It's like it's a big sort of empty space that is in the very middle of the picture and it's like taking the biggest portion of the picture. So I'm gonna say let's actually look at him as at the person. I'm trying to imagine if at the bottom there would be stuff. Okay, I see that design is not completely thought through. You kind of went for symmetry, but it's like, ah, eh, it's at the end of the composition. Who will notice that it's totally different? <laughs> I'm only saying this because this is the way I usually do. Okay, this ball is like a joint. I guess we'll go with something going down here as well. Now, one thing about this sketch um, I really don't know the logic of this, like the other side would be like this, I'm not sure. I mean, I think Alessandro also doesn't really know, because that's usually how things go. <laughs> Problem is that robot stuff, like hard surface things, they seem like they're fun and cool to work with, but actually it's the hardest thing to do, because you know, hard surface doesn't forgive. You have to like do precise geometry everywhere. And you should really start with building from a very small composition and then zoom in. Haven't really saved me ever, but that's a logical way to go, because otherwise it's kind of hard to figure out the anatomy, geometry, whatever you're painting when it's a close-up. At least for me, I don't know. So this is the Forsaken Robot, you can see there's like a spider web. Let's add a little bit here and there. Actually, we'll do that in uh, color. We'll mostly work on the shadows and lights to figure out how to put things the best way. And then I'll drop the PSD file in Patreon, of course. Okay, let's continue this. Uh, so Alessandro said it's presumably like a bottle, like a big glass uh, cylinder where he is kept. I'm not sure about that. I mean, it's your idea and all. <laughs> but... Okay, I guess... Yeah, it does make sense. It's just the moment I saw him, I kind of imagined him in the some sort of like a closet or like cellar. Old lab that looks like a cellar. So, it was hard to reimagine that, but right now I can see, like, he's in a bottle. He's forsaken cyborg from uh, the Ghost in the Shell universe. Remember when they create robots, and then they put them in the water, and they get covered with skin. So, this robot was never covered with skin. Something like that. Maybe like a prototype. Let's call him prototype. The prototype. So, yeah, I'm thinking we're gonna do, like totally one painting per episode because first of all there's not a lot of entries i have two for now so the other one will be next episode uh, next week and i really want to pay attention and i just i think everyone agrees right because it's never a good idea for me to rush into <laughs> trying to do more than i can maybe someday i'll be able to paint really fast but this day is not today okay let's drop the colors what? No, let's drop the spots, let's do the colors, let's drop the sketch, let's drop everything. Yeah, so let's go with a bottle, if that was the initial concept. I'm totally cool with that. I think it can be totally a bottle, not bottle, but glass cylinder. And there will be, of course, some kind of cracks on the glass. Let's actually add that, or I'll totally forget. Okay, this is like a chain that's holding the robot, or this is a part of this thing that's the piece of the glass cylinder. I'm feeling like it's both. <laughs> so I guess it makes sense if something is holding the robot. So we'll reimagine the shape of this is gonna be somewhere else, and there's gonna be like two of them. 
Or not two of them, I don't know. Somewhere it should go. It's probably holding him from the back, so we won't see the connection. Anyway, let's do this. So the glass is kind of green. Let's go with that. Juvenile A, hello. Basic color... Well, this is sci-fi. Basic color should be like electric... I can see shit now. Let's do brighter. Anyway, I had my new discovery that Juvenile A brush is really awesome in a very soft settings when the flow is super low, like 10%. But I will talk about that in a future episode. Now, the bottle is green, so let's add green light up right away. That will kind of highlight the robot. I should not forget that this robot should be sort of turned on, so there will be glowing lights on him somewhere. Because I remember there was quite a few paintings when I was going, yeah, this is gonna be a cyborg and his thing is gonna be glowing, and it's never glowing in the end. I always forget about the glowing part. Like some kind of tiny lights. Green or blue? I feel like we should really go for the sci-fi. Although, I don't know, sci-fi is different in different cultures. If this is closer to anime, then it's not necessarily blue light. Yeah, one thing about this sketch, it's too well defined. Like, there are like two things that you should always do in a sketch or drawing. And they should be in a different balance for sketch and drawing. This is more of a drawing, because you're building up the geometry and all, and that was very precise. But then you started drawing the final result with all the details, and they are also very precise. And that's the bad thing for a sketch, because sketch shouldn't be so definitive in details. Difference between sketch and drawing. Drawing is a standalone finalized piece of work that's a line art with hatching or whatever. It's like finalized to be a drawing. And sketch is just a technical quick thing, so you wouldn't mess up the painting. Now this is a drawing because all the details, like tiny things, like you don't need to see the these horizontal lines right here or very specific joints in here. They are not gonna help you out. It's a lot better to decide on these kind of details already in color. So what should be really precise in the sketch is the build-up, the geometry. All the boxes that you build, the spheres where you all create everything the vanishing points and stuff like that. Okay, let's decide on the light source. One of them will be sort of a rim light from the convenient green glow from the back. And another thing will be... Well, I guess from here... It kind of should be not very strong since it's like a forsaken lab or something, but we want to see things. That's my catchphrase now. Let's fill in the robot with a different color and then fill that in because I can't see shit. Actually, if the painting is going to be really dark, we should go the other way around. We'll switch from multiply to screen and invert the sketch. Yep. Okay, so I'm just filling in the basic silhouette of the robot. There should be a cooler word than a robot. What, a, a cyborg? Well, cyborg is not exactly... It's like a something closer to human, I'm not sure. Well, this is probably... Okay, let's call him a cyborg. It's cool enough. All these wires get thicker when they're going away. Are they supposed to be closer to the camera, or this is just some kind of delusion that you had? I feel like the delusion part... I remember I have that a lot as well. So they're probably going away from the camera. They should become thinner. Or really not change at all, because I don't think there's that much of a distance there. So this is a memory cable. Okay, you have a hole in your head, cyborg. Yeah, let's add some sort of a spot for the chain as well. I don't know, like this, and erase a couple of them. Not all of them, but a couple of them, because angles are always different for every piece of chain. So sometimes we'll see the hole, sometimes we won't, so that's how you go. Always try to go, ah, you expected another hole in there. No, it's not gonna happen, because this is real. I'm talking so much in this episode, this is gonna be a hell to edit. Because every time I talk, I have to, like, 
repeat 10 times to pronounce normally. Now, my favorite trick is to start building up basic flat surfaces with a flat brush to figure out the light. So we decided that the light is going to be from top left. Now the basic color of the robot, I think we should go with slightly yellowish white. Remember the thing I did with uh, you, you are Cyber Girl. Very special name. That's like a thing I have, I like when robots, especially if this is like potentially covered with skin robot, is supposed to be looking a bit medical, so that's why they're white. Nothing racist. Okay, right now I'm going to define... I'm gonna lower the transparency, the opacity of the sketch, and I'm going to define terminators from the main light. This is kind of an easy part. We're actually going basically in black and white. Well, I mean like super sharp definition, we're not making gradients here so far, like for now. This is the easiest way to go. So we're defining... I think this area will still be lit, so I'm still covering it with a strong light. Like, Terminator is like, imagine that where the light source is, and imagine you're looking from the point of that light bulb. And whatever that light bulb can see, that's on the right side of the Terminator. And this thing, light bulb will not see already, because this is facing away. Okay, this is also all bright. I'm gonna put basic spots and then I will turn off the sketch and actually try to come up with details on my own, like without a sketch, because it's really hard to follow the drawing in that sense when there's so many well-defined details. Okay, there will be a projected shadow from the head, so let's put this to an end. Well, I guess this is it for the Terminator part. There will be secondary light, of course, so we'll be seeing more. Let's actually do that now. So, secondary light, if this is the bright spot... Let's actually make it brighter, I think. This would be a good idea. So, the brightest spot on the surface of this robot will be... Holy shit, that's too bright. Okay, you know what? Let's actually go with this. It's all going to be a lot darker. This is the brightest spot. It's probably gonna be left only here, this color, and here, where the surface is actually facing the light completely. Everything else will be slightly darker. But right now we're working in this noir, black and white contrast mood. So let's define the color of the secondary light. It's going to be darker and colder, so... Let's actually choose the ambient color and make it slightly warmer and brighter, I guess, because that's something dark in there. Okay, this is the brightest spot in the no direct light area, so let's work with that. And what's interesting enough, it's not exactly supposed to be avoiding the direct light, because the fact that direct light is there doesn't mean that the ambient light isn't, doesn't go there. Ambient light is like all over the place, 360, so we shouldn't avoid. Usually they do that, they avoid to create a high contrast like a line between main light and secondary light, you can see like a dark line. Especially like in uh, comic books, they exaggerate that a lot. But we're not gonna go with that, I guess. It's not my style. Maybe it should be, I don't know. Okay, we should think about symmetry a little bit. Now this, and then the space. Space should be more in this area. Everything should be more in this area. And widening right here. I kind of like that it's widening in here because that means that the robot will be able to do this totally thinking this through. There's some sort of stuff like this in there. Now, at this point, when we're painting the ambient light, it's already not necessarily going to be super sharp, because the Terminator is defined. Right now we're working on the soft, deep lights. I'm gonna put this ear on a separate layer in a moment. Robotic stuff is always better when you are working in layers. Okay, let's fill this area in and add an ear cylinder thing. 
let's work with messy brushes since we don't have much time. So it's better to go like with a little bit stylization. So I'm creating some kind of ambient shadows around the cylinder. Just soft area, like soft shadows from all over the place. There will be more, but the point is that this spot should be darker than everything next to it. Same as here. I think it's gonna work really well for the dirty, messed up, forsaken robot with this kind of messy spots. Anyway, let's add the thing. The back parts are gonna be darker color because they're not the main robot surface. Cyborg, I'm sorry. Now, let's go around the ear thing with the shadow. Now, the biggest horrible thing about hard surface painting is not hard edges or anything like that. No, it's perfect circles. It's the biggest problem. Now, I have Nazumi, but sometimes it's actually a lot easier to just draw one circle. Let's actually make it on our own. No, what am I like? I can't draw a perfect circle. So now we have this. This is magical. We're gonna copy it and do all kinds of stuff. I'll turn on the sketch, although I kind of marked in. Yeah, we don't need to see the sketch. We place it here. We rotate it a little bit. Like, pay attention to where the head is rotated. Like this, and then we control alt and do that to put it in the plane. And just search for a good place, kind of like that. See, it almost looks like I can draw. And we copy another one, and actually, fuck it, let's use the same one, it's in the proper angle right now, why would we? It's gonna be a lower resolution, but who cares? We need the base. Now, I'm gonna increase it, then move it a bit to the left and down, like this, so it would feel like there's a slight bend going on, on the surface of this, I don't know, headphone? Then do another one in here. And then I'll remove my pathetic attempt to draw it from hand. And now let's remove everything we don't want to see. Let's actually increase this and put it at the very bottom to define the base of this speaker. Now it's probably gonna go darker here and there. Let's think about angles and add a little bit of that. And maybe remove it right away to add... That's where there... yeah, there were these horizontal divisions. Now, since this is a sci-fi future technology, we're gonna be adding a little bit of a thing here and there. Like right here, there will be a majestic, mysterious something. And everybody will be like, ooh, what does it mean? This is like legit technology. It's more than meets the eye. And you're like, yeah, now you know who you're dealing with. I could build a robot if I wanted to, I just don't want it. Kind of like that. Now let's add some details on the bright side of the Terminator. I really want to use like a super soft brush, but that's a bad idea. So let's go with this, I suppose. No, wait. We should blend in with uh, no direct light color, which is this. So we take like this. So this thing is almost completely facing away from the light. Like if the light is there, this is there. Almost black stuff. Now in here, there will be this soft brightening. And this is something I usually always forget to do, usually always, is to add proper details to the very end, like to the very place where the surface is facing the light, because only that area should be completely bright, everything else should be a lot darker. It's important to create the brightest spot not at the very edge, the very edge should go into darkness again, because the light is kind of a little bit from the front area, from the side, like this, not from here. 
like this. And that means that the place that is facing the light directly is somewhere right here, not at the very horizon of the object. And if you keep that in mind and create this darkening at the very edge, a soft one, a little bit, everything will look a lot more three-dimensional just because you care enough and people can see it. Should also, like, consider the fact that it's not just about the angle, but about the distance. This light source is probably not very far away. By the way, if the light source is there, the shadow from the head will be a lot stronger. Let's remove more light from here. And make it a bit softer, kind of like this. And bring back some ambient light to not create a hole. And since we're here, let's add more ambient light details. It's important uh, to break the gradient of light from the, like, with the terminator, where the main light is and where it's not, because where there is no main light, there is no color of main light. I chose main light to be a bit warm, or not cold, and the ambient light is kind of cold. That's why you can see how on the bright edge, it's kind of a warm or just gray color of the robot, of the cyborg. And in the dark, well, we're getting kind of like dark and cool color. And that looks realistic right away. Because people get like, hey, there is a cold ambient light in there. That's real. I don't know what this is, but it's going to take place. Sometimes when you're trying to just paint a complex cyborg, whatever that means, you know, it's not really important to create a perfect design. It's just important to create an impression of a complex, high-tech cyborg, then you should go a lot more with um, kind of like a messy, loose sketch technique, but with actual color spots. Let's actually try it out, I don't think I ever did that. It's important to have a messy brush like this, you see this weird shape? It looks like a turret, so you just add all kinds of stuff. Keeping in mind the geometry, for that you would really use the basic build-up, like a good geometry sketch without details, that you could just turn it on. This I can't use right now, there's a shit ton of details and I can't use it to provide a good guide of a geometry for me. If that would be a quick, loose, not loose, but precise, but not detailed sketch, I would be able to use it to guide me with geometry while I'm thinking on these loose details. Because details can't be loose, it's cool. What's important is to pay attention to correct light, like to correct colors of light, and to perfect geometry. Whatever mass there is, you should really get a good feeling that it's at the right angle. That's what's important, not the actual details, not silhouettes. Never work with silhouettes, that's a suicide. So that's like at the edge, so we'll get more of a horizontal details in there. Some kind of connector for this thing, and another step of it, whatever the fuck that means, you know? And don't define silhouettes, just add spots like this. It's really important to have a messy brush for it, because the biggest problem of digital art is that you kind of always start with a perfect circle brush. And that's horrible, because you can't just create perfect round spots, like in this case when I'm creating a loose details. Now, take a note that I'm adding loose details where it's dark. That's an idea that I came up with while I was looking for the first time in my life at artwork by Rembrandt. He has like very dark and depressive art style. Everyone looks like they're homeless and alcoholics. But what he really nails in his paintings is this perfect segregation of details. Everything that's brightly lit is super sharp and detailed. Let's actually take a look at Rembrandt artwork. Okay, let's have a look. I guess that's his actual face. Check this out. Super sharp details of all the wrinkles and especially highlights. And in here you can see all, like, you can see separate hairs even. But if we go in the dark side, look at this shit. It's just blurry. He doesn't give a fuck about dark areas. Because in reality, we don't really see well in the dark. We kind of have our own noise of a matrix in our eye. That's actually true. There's noise and everything's blurry in the dark. 
for us as well. It's not necessarily supposed to be in the eye of a human, but... So where there's a bright contrast, this dark hat is very sharp. Not because the hat is sharp, but because the background is bright. We see the sharp silhouette of the bright background. But the hat itself, there's literally no details in there. Some kind of effort in here just to like... Yeah, the, it's, it's a hat, it's not a hole in the universe. So he added that and everything else is just... Hat is just a black spot, it might easily be, I don't know, a, a ghost. So that's like the secret that I found out from Rembrandt art. So it's really cool to go with this whenever you want. But I mean, it kind of takes practice to be able to create loose details. You're gonna have to think with the angle and planes that you work in and then just add accurate spots all over the place to make it work. Anyway, let's add something else. Let's add a little bit of definition. I think this thing is facing a bit lower than this plane, so it might get a bit darker in here. So yeah, it's important to find a good messy brush that would that would allow you to do this weird stuff. Like, if y'all would do this with a perfect circle of brush, everyone would look at it like, why is there a bunch of random circles in there? It wouldn't work. But when they see like a bristly mess like this, they go, oh, okay, there is no point even to search for actual detail in there. There's an actual mess that kind of giving us a hint about a complex geometry in there, but it's actually not defined, so it's cool. It's like, yeah, this artist knows what's up, he just didn't have time because he's that cool. So he did quick spots all over the place and just put his sunglasses on and went away to hang out with chicks. So the Terminator is actually a really good way to segregate the amount of details. Everything that's in the layer of this should be sharp and well-defined. Everything that's in the secondary light can be a lot more loose. And the darker it goes, the more just whatever the fuck that is style kicks in. Let's add another one right here. So everyone would go just crazy about the amount of details and like, holy shit, this is actually working. Why are we not funding this? Now, let's add more ambient light on these secondary planes, especially the ones that are not facing down, but sideways. And this is where you really start feeling some sort of realistic rendering kicking in because there are two different lights, two different brightnesses, and they are following the actual geometry. Really cool. Now, I'm gonna choose just darkest color and add a little bit of special indents all over the place to make him look a bit more complex, because this looks very solid right now. Like, I'll actually go at 25% transparency on top of both lights and just add some kind of, uh... Okay, I remember there was something underneath. Aha, uh -huh, this kind of stuff, but I don't know. Well, it doesn't really matter. Maybe go even tinier, like super sharp lines. I'm using this trick of creating a line and then erasing part of it to make it like super thin. Sometimes it's gonna be darker, especially where this sort of a crack is facing us, so I'll add a bit more dark color in here. Yeah, I think this will work out. Actually, kind of looks cool. This is a weird way to end this edge right here, like with a super sharp ending. Uh, let's probably think that this thing is still going on like here. We can't just do that, we should go like, whoa, some things. No, this is lame shape, let's do something else. I don't know how this is different, but I guess it will work. Now, let's add more messy details inside of the robot, since his insides are supposed to be a lot... have a lot more detail. And all the insides have all these gears going on. So yeah, I think this is a really cool idea, when you're like trying to work with more details than you actually are thinking through. It's a good way to at least start with this loose brush 
And then you might add more details by just making this brush smaller and if you like... When you're using these loose spots, at a certain point you start going like, wow, I actually see a very good geometry at the right angle right now. I can go more detailed on there. And then you make the brush smaller and keep going. And it's gonna look awesome. God damn it, I love robots. Cyborgs, god damn it. Whoa, look how cool this is. I added just separate spots by this brush and it's creating such a cool pattern in here. And this is like the only place in the world where this pattern would work like that. Like not this pattern, but just the repetitive array of spots. Adding sharp edges on the lit layer. Like this, I'm actually erasing the bright side of the terminator. And then adding some edges like this. Let's say there's some kind of super detailed gear going on on the edge of this sphere. Again, I'm not thinking it through, but I'm letting everybody know that this is meant to be not thought through. And when that happens, that means you, that you should not define clean edges. In the drawing, there are clean edges of everything. In here as well, I can feel like the edges are way more clean than the idea. There's no actual idea, you just want to see some kind of yes connections, but you don't know exactly and you pay too much attention to the line, but the geometry is not good enough for such a clean line. And it's totally fine, because when you're painting a very detailed cyborg, it's never a good idea to go with perfect details, because you're not an engineer, you're not creating an actual cyborg. What you're doing is creating an impression of a very detailed cyborg. So you actually have to, like, sit down in front of the lake in the morning, throw some stones in it, and accept the fact that yes, you will have to paint with a loose brush sometimes. Even if it's sci-fi and you wanna go super detailed, it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> I am dark. Okay, you know what? Uh, let's add details here, maybe a little bit here, and then I wanna add highlights and that will be it. So there's some sort of a second edge going on. Not here though, this looks horrible. Like we'll see a little bit of it in this area. And of course it's like going away from time to time because it's a super complex robot. Now let's go insane again. Um, there will be like a clavicle in here. Clavicle or scapula, I constantly forget which one is which. Okay, I really don't want to be afraid of the edges of this, so let's go in yet another layer. Yeah, let's add a decent bone, sort of, in here. So there's like a muscle thing, or some sort of connector, like that. Maybe let's add a bit more bright areas as well, like a little bit brighter. Also, there's probably going to be actual direct light on this area too. Like some of them will catch that in the very edge. Too bright. Some light in here probably. And again, as you can see, I'm completely out of control and adding loose details even with bright brush. And it still works out. Because this is the area where you trying to make an impression of more details than the brush can show because the brush should always be at the scale of your thought if you can't actually decently think through super tiny details use a messy brush in there just work with planes and the brush will go like ah yeah you get the idea and everybody's like yeah okay more of this action although i don't know what for it's not supposed to close maybe it is Oh wait, we're supposed to add this kind of stuff too. This is awesome. I feel like the face in here should go even darker, like even the in the bright area. So let's mix in even more of ambient light. It should like really get close, because the angle is huge, it's basically on the very edge of Terminator. I keep saying edge of Terminator and bright and dark side of Terminator. Terminator is the edge. <laughs> 
a really quick silhouette of this thing, of the uh, horizontal line of the cylinder. Let's use this trick one more time. So we're kind of looking at him on the eye level. So I guess the circle should be like it was on our eye level, but kind of facing down, like we're looking at it from the top. Which is weird, that means that we're looking at the robot from the top, which we shouldn't. Like, it's not a very good idea to paint a portrait from the level higher than eye level. And add a silhouette of this color. And let it go a little bit away into the fog as well, but not as much as the background. Then I'll merge it all together with the background and make some kind of loose depth of field illusion with a messy brush. And of course adding some awesome whatever the fuck that is details. And thick glass gets darker on the edges, so let's do that. Also it's very convenient for the composition. Now let's add highlights, I'm so eager to add highlights. Oh, you know what? A little bit of direct light could hit the ear thing. What do you think about that? Let's do that. So we add a little bit of this. Thinking of the projected shadow from here and the way it would go. Something like that. Probably stretching away like this and hitting yet another terminator in here on the ear and creating a very sharp edge on one side, and a very loose one on the other. Loose or soft, really, but I'm doing loose. Okay, let's go a bit darker, because it's further away and kind of facing away from the light. Kind of like that, we're adding this little detail and the crowd goes wild, because oh my god, this is the actual light we're looking at. Take your time and appreciate this moment. Now, highlights, yeah, let's do that. Okay, the light source is slightly warm, so let's go with this color. We're actually choosing the color of the light, but let's go in 50% transparency, or we could just use a darker color. Now, the spot where the brightest area of the color of the object is not the same spot where the highlight is. The angle where it's gonna be reflected to see the actual light source is gonna be kind of like here, I think. Okay, we need to go brighter. <laughs> it's really important to not create highlights where they're not supposed to be. This is a huge mistake that you might make. So this is totally the angle that would reflect. These things, it would be super cool to add it, I really want, but there's just no way. It's not facing at the same direction as this. This ball, however, it will. It's probably having a little bit of a speck in here. I still don't like the thing that it's too messy, I guess, again, it's like a super bright detail, so we should go with a very definitive brush, like a triangle. See how cool this is, there's like super tiny detail that we don't even see it, like it's not lit in here, but the highlight is so bright that it will actually break through even though it's super tiny and create a tiny bright spot looks cool, like an actual illusion that details are a lot smaller and precise than the strokes. So on top of the light of the chains, let's add a little bit of the fog effect. Yes, this is too much, but the point is I'm gonna make it more transparent. Let's actually add another chain silhouette right here. Oh yeah, there you go, like total realistic shit. Okay, this now feels like it's one chain, so let's actually make it work. Right, I almost forgot what I was going to do. Let's add more scratches, any scratches really. So, some of them right here, okay, not just so mindless but a little bit less mindless. Now the dark ones are gonna be like super rare scratches, because dark scratches, that means that they are so deep, 
that we can see an actual shadow in them. Those are super rare things to occur. What's a lot more noticeable is the bright scratches, especially around the highlights. We get this kind of effect, you know? Only you should go a lot more accurate. <laughs> And scratches are gonna expose some of the highlight effect, even on like all the surfaces. Because those sons of bitches are facing all over the place. Okay, last highlight detail is on chains, because you can skip all kinds of details, but you can't skip a highlight on a metallic object. Otherwise it doesn't really look metallic, you know. So even here, we'll add a little bit of that action. Using soft brushes here because of the depth of field effect. Lights! I almost forgot lights. Jesus Christ. Now, let's choose... Uh, maybe a square brush, really. Okay, what light would you have? You know what, I wanna go with orange for some reason. I like retro sci-fi. Um, where would the light be? I remember there's like a brain. Let's add some lights on the brain. Although that's not exactly what I expected to do right now. Mm, kinda like that. It actually requires more details, but I'm out. Let's add a bit more lights. And it's always a good idea to go with, for instance, dark orange and then add the bright yellow center for all the glowing, like that. And maybe some of these even be bright enough to go closer to yellow. Oh yeah, this is looking cool, only we're gonna lower the effect a bit. Kinda like that. Well, I'm gonna call this one done! Thank you, Alessandro Castellani, for your submission. This was a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. Cause I surely did. <laughs> I'm uploading the PSD file on Patreon's page. You can download it from there. Also, you can upload your own sketches in there. So, do that if you want. And I thank you for watching if you did. I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Don't forget your robots. I mean cyborgs. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye! Well, there you go. A tutorial and I've got my new wallpaper.